Now that we've talked a bit about the anatomy of Jump and how we open and work with data tables, let's actually go forward and talk about some of the more important features of Jump, specifically the interface of Jump. Now, Jump is what we would call progressive and context dependent. Now, let me unpack those two terms for you. By progressive, I mean that as you produce output in Jump, you'll be given more options of things you can do. Now, this is a special feature of Jump. In a lot of statistical software, you pick from a menu, like an analyze menu, the specific procedure you want. Now, in Jump, procedures get grouped together in logical domains. So let me show you one of those domains. Under the analyze menu, there's the distribution platform, probably one of the most used platforms in all of Jump. Let me open the distribution platform and let me do something specific. I'm going to cast some of these columns into the Y role. Now take a second to look at these different roles. Y columns are the columns we want to understand the individual characteristics of. So if we just wanted to know the mean, the standard deviation, maybe get a histogram of these different columns, we could pick one, let's use bill amount, and click it into the Y columns. Another way we can enter a column into that role is by dragging it over into that section. Now there are some additional roles we'll talk about later in this class for weighted or for frequency or even the by variable, which is a very useful role to split up analyses based on the levels of another variable. For now, let's just use these two columns, put them in the Y columns role and click OK. Now this output in Jump is called the distribution output. And what we have are histograms, so vertical histograms in jump, and quantiles and summary statistics for the bill amount column, and frequencies for the credit card column. Now, a very interesting and unique feature of jump is that data in outputs is linked. So if I click and drag over the top bill amount, so the tables that had the highest bills, those points actually get highlighted in the data set. That is, the point right here, let me just select this one, that person who had a $70 bill, if I scroll down in the table, I can find that row. This is that individual. So this is a unique feature of Jump. Selecting observations in a platform output like this selects them everywhere. Now this affords certain things we can do. If I click on the tables I'd used a credit card and then click on the tables that didn't, if I look in the bill amount histogram, I could actually see where those observations are. This gives us a course way to play with the data or to click through it. Now there's something important you may have noticed in this output. For the bill amount column, we're given a histogram and a box plot. We even have certain candidates for outliers, and we'll talk about outliers later on in this course. But for the bill amount column, we're given a different visualization than the credit card column. In the credit card column, we're given a frequency plot of yeses and nos, and a frequency table, the number of times we observed no as using a credit card, and the number of times we observed yes. For bill amount, we're given quantiles, so the maximum score, the minimum score, the median, and we're given basic summary statistics, mean, standard deviation, standard error, etc. So what Jump has done is it has contextualized our output. And this is what I mean by Jump being context dependent. The type of output you get depends on the modeling type of the variables you used. And remember, our modeling types for categorical variables, nominal and ordinal, right? And for quantitative variables, we have continuous. That's interval and ratio scales. So Jump knows what to do with different modeling types. It knows when you have a continuous scale, it's appropriate to calculate a mean. It's appropriate to show a histogram. But when you have a column that just represents categories, it knows the most appropriate thing to do is count up the frequencies. So that's the context-dependent nature of Jump. But what do I mean by it being progressive? So when we produce this output, this is great. We get a lot of information, but there's many more things we can do in this type of platform. So let me step back. The distribution platform in Jump is the location of all what we would call univariate analyses, all the analyses that concern a single variable at a time. Now, we're going to talk a lot about different types of analyses, but these red triangles are how you will get to them. So the red triangles and jump take you further. So once we're already in the distribution platform, let me click the red triangle next to bill amount. And notice we have a number of different options we can select. For instance, if we want to perform a hypothesis test on the mean, something we'll talk about later, we can select it here. 
If we want to get a plot that tells us whether the variable is normally distributed, we can select that here. We can turn on different options for our histogram. Here's a cool one. This is called a shadowgram, another way of representing the frequencies observed in the different parts of the categories. So let me go back actually and turn this back to a histogram. So notice that these red triangles, and there's many of them in this window, one, two, three, and four, these red triangles take you further and they give you additional options. So let me click the bill amount red triangle and hold on to the options list here to sort of look at what are available. And now let me click the red triangle for credit card. Remember, credit card is nominal. It's a different type of variable. And so, jump knowing this, it'll give us different options. Of course, for a nominal variable, we're not going to be testing normality. We're not going to be testing a mean. We might test the proportions or get a different kind of plot, like a mosaic plot, another way of representing how many people we've observed in these different categories. But Jump knows, because this variable is nominal, that only certain operations are permissible on it. Now, one final red triangle I haven't shown you yet is the topmost red triangle for the distribution output. Now this is the red triangle that applies to this whole output window, the whole window we have here. And if I select this red triangle, there's one important option that you may want to use when actually looking at your own data, and it's called stacking. If I click stack, this will rotate my histograms and rotate my output such that my histograms are on their side, which is a more typical way of seeing them. But pause for a second and think about what it means to have a histogram on the side. To the right is more positive right? To the right means a higher value. Now that's actually a little mental rotation you're doing in your head. If I go back and unstack these, higher on the scale now means higher in the values. So actually vertical histograms tend to be a nicer way of visualizing your data. In addition to this, most of our screens are wider than they are tall. And so if I go to distribution and I take all my columns and click them into Y, I can actually see a great deal more than if I had the variable stacked. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let me go to stack now, and notice that I can only see three of the different outputs. But if I go back and unstack, I can actually see one, two, three, four, five, almost six of them. So the vertical histograms, both I think cognitively are more intuitive, but also are just more practically useful because we can see more in our actual output. So let me close this window. Now before we go further, I want to point you in the direction of a very useful feature of Jump, which is called the Statistics Index. Now let me motivate a reason why you might use the Statistics Index. Suppose you were looking for a very specific procedure. Perhaps it was that normal quantile plot, which we'll look at later in the course. If you were looking through menus in Jump, you wouldn't find normal quantile plot anywhere. Again, this is the progressive interface of Jump. The option for a normal quantile plot only comes up when you choose the appropriate platform, the distribution platform, and use a column that has the modeling type set to be continuous. And so, this can be a little frustrating if you're looking for a very specific procedure and you're not sure where in Jump it is. The Statistics Index is the solution to this. Under the Help menu, you'll find the Statistics Index. And the Statistics Index has a scrollable list showing you all the different analyses, visualizations, and functions that Jump can perform. So let me just click in here and I'll start typing normal quantile. We see it right there, the normal quantile plot, and we can do a couple things once we're on that section. The first is I can click Topic Help, which is a very useful thing in Jump to click if you ever want to know more about what you're seeing. In addition to this, we can click Launch, select a column, I'll put the Y column to be bill amount, and when I click OK, Jump will pre-populate this output with that option. Knowing what you do now, you can go to the options under the red triangle and find, oh, there it is, the normal quantile plot. So the statistics index is a very useful way to find the particular analyses you're looking for. Now while we're at it, notice that in Anywhere in Jump, if you go to the Tools menu and select the Help tool, you can click any output in Jump and it will also go to that help file. So for instance, what if you wondered what this output was here, this box plot? Let me click the question mark on it, and it'll take us to that section and tell us exactly what we're looking at. So the Tools menu has that very useful option of Help, which I encourage you to use, especially as you're starting to learn Jump. Now, while we're on the topic of tools, there's another tool that's going to be very useful for us, and it's called the Selection Tool. Now the selection tool is going to be useful whenever we want to save or share work. 
specifically when we want to copy output from Jump to another piece of software. So let me show you how this looks. I'm in the distribution platform right now, and imagine I want to copy this bill amount histogram. So just this histogram here, and I want to copy it to a Word file. So let me actually open Word. I'll just pull it up here. I'll make a new document. So here's my blank Word document that I want to paste this histogram into. Let me go back to Jump. I'll go to the Tools menu and select the Selection tool. With the Selection tool, also called the big fat plus sign, we can click and drag over what we want to select. With it selected, I can simply go to the Edit menu and go to Copy. Now, when I go to Word, I can simply go back to the Edit menu and paste it into my document. Another useful thing to do with this, especially if you're on a Mac, is using the Preview application. If I open Preview, when I go to the File menu and make a new document, if I have something stored in the clipboard, it'll simply be my Jump output. So now, I can copy it and save this out to any file type I want. If you're on a PC, an easy way to do this is, once something is selected, go to the Edit menu and select Save Selection As. So copying output from Jump is very easy. But there are times we want to save all of the output, or we want to save particular parts of the output, but we want to keep it in a Jump format. And that's where we use a Jump journal. Now the journal is actually what I'm using right now as my lecture outline. To make a journal, you simply go to the File menu, select New, and select New Journal. A blank journal will appear, and the journal is something we can simply add objects to. There's a couple ways to do that. With something selected, and remember we select things by using the Tools menu, grab the Selection tool. So once something is selected, we can simply click and drag it into the journal, and now that journal contains that object. We can drag additional objects, here I'll select Quantiles, and drag that in. If we wanted to drag the frequencies from this output, I can also drag that in. I can put it below the histogram. I can put it above the histogram. There's lots of different things we can do. Now, journals are still dynamic. I can close and open sections. That's what the gray triangles do. I can still move things around. So if I go back to the Tools menu and use the Selection tool, I can select Quantiles, and maybe I wanted it at the top. So I'll drag it up to the very top. So notice that the journal is a nice way to organize output. If you want to save the entire output, you can select the entire output, or even more simply, if we just launch the platform and get the output, on the Mac, you can use Command-J. On the PC, it'll be Control-J. Let me show you what that looks like. With this window selected, I'm going to press Command-J, and you'll notice what Jump does is drops the entire output of that window into the most current journal. And what's nice about this is we can minimize that output go and produce new output, suppose I want different columns here as my Y, and I'll press Command-J again, and it'll journal that output to this window. Now, we have two distribution outputs that we can rename. I'll go back to the tools and select my arrow key, and if I just double click on the section here, I can rename this something logical. What's useful about the journal is that we can store output from many different analyses and keep track of what we've been doing especially when you start working on your own research data, I encourage you to journal every analysis you do, even if you don't think you'll come back to it later. The nice thing about doing this is you keep a log of what you've analyzed and what you've done. And when you're ready to close Jump, just simply go to the File menu and save the journal. This will let you save it and come back to it later. If there's ever an analysis you want to rerun, remember these red triangles always let you go further. So if I select the red triangle on that first distribution output, I'm given the option to rerun this output in a new window. This will actually launch a new instance of the same output, which allows me to, again, click through the data or do more operations on it. Now, it's worth mentioning that Jump has an underlying scripting language. And if you really like programming, I encourage you to look at how Jump will script these different platforms. To view the script, click on the red triangle in a journal and just click Edit Script and this will show you how Jump is actually running this in the background using its scripting language. In a regular output window, over here, you can also find scripts under that topmost red triangle. There'll be a script menu for every output, and you have many options. You can save the script to the data table, something I showed you before. You can save the script to a window, or you can even save the script of this output directly to your journal. Here, it'll put a little link and save the script for running the distribution output. Now that's just a very basic introduction to Jump, and certainly we're going to be using Jump a lot in this course. 
When we start talking about visual displays of data, we'll come back to the distribution platform and see other things we can do with it to visualize the univariate or single variable characteristics of a distribution. Now, if you want to learn more right away, you can go to the jump.com website at jump.com and go to resources for users, and there's a number of different things you can look at. The first I would point you to is the learning library. Now, the learning library has an organized section of different analyses and procedures you can do in Jump. For instance, let's say you wanted to make a particular graphical display of data. Suppose it was a mosaic plot, a particular type of contingency plot. Under this section, you can click One Page Guide, which will take you to a single page PDF with step-by-step -step instructions and even the sample data that you find in Jump. Remember, sample data is under the Help menu under the Sample Data section. Now, in addition to this, for all of these different analyses, you can, for some of them, take a tutorial, and for all of them, watch a demo. If you click Watch Demo, you'll be popped over to YouTube, where you'll see a three to five minute demo showing how to actually perform that analysis and jump. So the Learning Library, which is again, under Resources for Users Learning Library, and also linked on our wiki, is a great place to go when you're first starting to use Jump. Finally, you'll also see under the Resources for Users section, the Jump User Community link. The Jump User Community you can get to directly by going to community.jump.com. The user community has a wealth of materials, question and answers, recent files and scripts, and under the Other Communities section, there's even a Jump Academic Community, where there's a question and answer board for students and even additional resources. So I encourage you to use the academic and Jump user communities if you have any questions regarding the use of Jump.